Welcome back. You know, Amy, I was just watching you as Buck was teaching and preaching, and yes. you had a little radiant glow about you. <laughs> he is McDreamy. <laughs> McDreamy. Is he amazing? In oh, your face, boy. Grace. In your face, Grace. I love it. Well, we are, uh, we're blessed that he came and shared with us <laughs> that God would allow him to do that. Yeah. And we're blessed Thank that you. Thank you for inviting him. Oh, absolutely. He'd come back. Yeah. I'm interested in the next in the next series of teachings. I know. He's the best. Well, we're here, we're here now <laughs> for our regular Thursday hard questions segment. And are you ready for these hard questions? <laughs> Today, my co-host Amy is uh, with me, as you see, and so is Pastor Glaze, and so, so is our brother. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here with us, too. It's just not the mm -hmm. same when, when you're not with us and we don't have the chaplain in the house. Yeah, you got to have a little crazy Chuck every now and then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A little crazy. I don't see you as crazy. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here, too, because this is the time when we talk about things that are uh, subjects that you may not really hear about a lot. You know, and we want, we want to open the, 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 the floor up and say, hey, what, what do you want to hear about? What, what is God charging in your life, and how are you learning? And our first question comes from a viewer. Who, who sent the question in. So our panelists Ooh. don't know. See, they don't know what our, what our question is. We keep this very secret. Yeah. It's kind of like the Oscars, you know. Where we People just... ask me that all the time. Do you get to read the questions ahead of time and prepare? I was like, oh, no. That would be way too nice. That's right. <laughs> That's if right. we can right. prepare. And... You'd come in with a sermon. A sermon, yeah. <laughs> We'd have four different sermons, every one of our hard questions. We wouldn't be able to know. It's, it's, it's totally impromptu. And our first question comes... And it's this, is there a, a scripture to clarify that if the wine that Jesus drank was fermented or was it grape juice? And that comes from Joanne from West Middlesex, Pennsylvania. So mm -hmm. what do you say? Was it, was it a fermented wine that Jesus drank or that he made? Remember he went to the wedding mm -hmm. uh, feast? And, and, and first he, miracle. First miracle. Turned he turned exactly. water into wine. Water into wine. Don't is, you think it would have said water into grape juice? Well, you got to know the language. You got to go into the languages and understand the language, which mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you that I have. Have any of you guys looked at that? And what, what's, I, what's your response? I have. Uh, Paul says, be not drunk with wine, mm -hmm. because that leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And it is the same word that is used there that is used in this passage. Now, I have uh, checked my Kyle and Deleach uh, Greek, and and it can refer to um, new wine, mm -hmm. which or or sweet wine, which is unfermented, mm -hmm. but that is very very rare. Mm -hmm. So you know, well, there's cultural things mm -hmm. too, Pastor. I, I, what, what's your thoughts? Well, I know there's a verse in the Psalms that talks about wine that makes the heart glad. Yeah, you know, now, great. <laughs> Grape juice, is not, <laughs> it's not going to make your heart glad. But I, I don't think that, you know, when we think about distilled alcohol that is made today, I don't think that it was, you know, distilled like that. I think that it might, you know, had a little uh, fermentation and, you know, it, and, and you probably had to drink a whole lot of it to, you know, get to inebriate it. But I, I do think that it, you know, it did have... Uh, certain amount of potency to it. I think it was a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I grew up where, you know, it was anti-drinking, anti-wine, you know, that's just not what we did. And, um, and then we started traveling in ministry mm -hmm. and we would go overseas to Europe. Mm -hmm. And I saw the most interesting things, like when we would come, they would, they would hide bottles of wine. They would hand out bottles of wine to new guests at the church services. And I thought that is like, it, it really is a cultural thing too, because they mm -hmm. drink a glass at dinner and they don't get drunk. I'm with, I'm with these people all week, you know, 10 days at a time and they don't get drunk. So it's, it really is a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't prefer the taste, which might be good. Uh, so but my, my first drink of, of wine was when I was in Czechoslovakia, before it was Czech and Slovakia mm -hmm. and broken up, and I got food poisoning. Oh and the medicine mm -hmm. they had was weird, and so they said, well, drink, drink wine. And it was my first. So I did, my first experience with wine was not glamorous at all. Well, we've got an ongoing discussion on our Facebook page in, in regards to this. Should Christians drink 
wine right. or not, you mm -hmm. know, and I think it is. There is a culture. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting to see the different perspectives, mm -hmm. you know, how people come at it from different perspectives. But how do you approach that? So Jesus did make and did drink what we would consider to be a wine today mm -hmm. uh, at some form of it. Right. What, what about today? How, what about Christians? What, what should we do? Well, you know, to me, I, I think that uh, each person has to pray and be led by the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, you know, there are people that have been alcoholics mm -hmm. and, you know, for them to, you know, right. maybe have a drink of wine, it might set off that whole downward spiral again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there are other people, you know, if I can share a testimony real quick. Sure. Uh, when I first got mm -hmm. saved, I gave up all my rock music. I mean, mm -hmm. all my albums, I just got rid of them. What rock it, music? Well, Which you rock? know, uh, Chicago, Doobie Brothers. Oh, you know? yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and what happened was that as I began to grow, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can listen to it now. Mm -hmm. But before, it was associated with a whole nother lifestyle. Right. That's right. exactly and, right. And if I had listened to it, it would have mm -hmm. kept me in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. right. And so now I can because I, I have that spiritual maturity to be able mm -hmm. to do it. And I think it's the same thing mm -hmm. with, with this alcohol, you know, mm -hmm. that some people can handle it mm -hmm. in, in a way that it doesn't, you know, affect right. them negatively. Right. Right. And, and so each person has to be led by well, the Spirit. What, what about your witness in the community? Mm -hmm. Does that get impacted if you're out and you, you're seen in a place drinking a, 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 a wine beverage or a beer beverage? That's a good question. How does that impact your witness? Uh, I think that if that impacts your witness, you don't have a very strong witness. Really? Now, for that, but for that reason, I don't do it. I mean, the fact that you love people, the fact that you care for them and they know it. I go to Burger King every morning and get a cup of coffee. I have developed a relationship through that little crazy speaker, and, and they know who I am, they know what I stand for, and if, if that cup of coffee or that glass of beer impinges my testimony. My testimony may be kind well, of weak. You can't put coffee and beer on the same pat uh, category and discuss that as equals because it's not apples for apples. That's true. Though they have social implications. I wish we could go on with it. I'm more concerned that you're getting your coffee at Burger King. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm shocked with all of the amazing <laughs> coffee places we're going to Burger King. Well, we're it's at, on the way. I mean, maybe a flame grilled I got, burger. I got to blow the whistle. Yeah. We're, 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 we're out of time. <laughs> Great discussion. We, we'll, we'll do a follow up. We, we want your hard questions too. So send in hard questions to us. We want to know about what you want to know about. So send them in to us. You said the address on the screen. And as you write that down, I want to also say about Pastor Glaze, I want you to know that this book that we have, come back when you come back to me, this book is something that you should have in your personal library. You need, you need to have a defense. Be ready to make a defense. Yep. So you need to have a defense about why the book is the book. And so I want you to get a copy. You come to our website, we'll show you how. Look at today's program, we'll share the links on how to get a copy. Everybody should have one, and we'll be right back.